Hey everybody, it's Ron from Pick Dogs, and this is Ron's Rundown. We're going to go over the MLB game scheduled for Monday, June 20th, 2022. Now, if you like what you see, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comments section below. Now, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at the premium picks tab at pickdogs.com. I'm running a daily $15 MLB best bet, so check it out at Pick Dogs Premium. Alrighty, here we go. Here are the games for Monday, June 20th. First up, we see the Miami Marlins taking on the New York Mets. Trevor Rogers and David Peterson are your starters for this one. This is a pretty tricky game, in my opinion, as there's a couple of statistics that contradict each other in this matchup. If you look at the Mets, they've struggled against left-handed pitching this season. Against righties, they've been one of the best lineups in baseball. But against lefties in the past month and overall this year, the Mets are outside the top 10 in both Team OPS and and isolated power against lefties, and they're actually outside the top 20 in isolated power against lefties. And Trevor Rogers, you know, 5.87 ERA, not very good at all. He has struggled quite a bit this season, but he has had success against the Mets in his career, especially last season where he had 11 innings, 16 strikeouts against these Mets, and had an ERA below one. So I'm not too sure if the, if the struggles are going to continue for Rogers as he's had success against this team, and the Mets have not done much against lefties in the past. But on the other side, the Marlins have really struggled against lefties this season. They're dead last in baseball in the last month in Team OPS against lefties. Now, I will say they've had the least amount of plate appearances out of all the teams against left-handed pitching as well. So, not as much of a sample size for the Fish as we would like to see. But, they're striking out the most. They have the highest strikeout rate against lefties this season with a strikeout rate above 25%. And they're facing David Peterson, however, who I think is, is in store for some regression. We already started to see that in his last start against the Brewers. Now, the Brewers are not a very good lineup against lefties, so you could compare them with the Marlins a little bit. They have a little bit more power in their lineup than Miami does. But four innings, six hits, four earned runs, two walks allowed by Peterson. And I think he could be in trouble in this spot as well. But I haven't loved the way the Marlins lineup has looked overall against lefties this season. So kind of a tough game overall. I'm just going to lean towards the Marlins here on the run line. They've covered the last two games on the run line in this series, including an outright win on Sunday in that 6-2 ball game. I think it's going to be a pretty low scoring game overall. And I think because of that, the runs are going to be hard to come by. They're going to be at a premium. So one and a half runs on the, money, on the run line is not a bad idea. So give me the Marlins here plus one and a half. Next up, we see the Chicago Cubs taking on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Caleb Killian and JT Brubaker are your starters here. Now, we see a pick -em in this one on the money line. Minus 110 apiece for the Cubs and Pirates, and I completely agree with the books in this game. I think this is a coin flip game, not a game I would be rushing to bet just because I think each team has a 50% shot to win, in my opinion. I think both pitchers have had some things that I like in their game and then some things to worry about as well. Caleb Killian was terrible last time out against the Padres. Four innings, five earned runs, five walks. Didn't have a single strikeout in that outing. That was a 19-5 Cubs loss in the end. And JT Brubaker did pitch pretty well last time out against the Cardinals, but it wasn't good enough for the Pirates to get the win. He went five and a third, giving up two earned runs with a home run allowed. And he's given up four home runs in his last three outings combined, all losses for Pittsburgh. So, you know, not my favorite game on the board. I do think Brubaker is a little bit better, or I'd be a little bit more confident in backing him in this spot. I also think the Cubs lineup on the road is not really in a good place uh, coming off that shutout loss against the Braves on Sunday. I'm going to take a lean with the Pirates here, but certainly my, not my favorite game on the board. Next up, we see the Detroit Tigers taking on the Boston Red Sox. Alex Fado and Josh Winkowski are your starters here. Now, the Detroit Tigers offense has not been good at all this season against right-handed pitching. Against lefties, they are getting a lot better offensively, but against right-handers, they are dead last in the league overall this year and in the last month as well in baseball as they have a 571 team OPS against righties. In terms of isolated power, it doesn't get much better as they're ranked 29th in the league against righties in that stat. And Josh Winkowski, you know, not a guy that I'm going to be backing too often this season. He is 23 years old, so could have a bright future in the major leagues. But last time out, he was really good against the A's. You know, not a very good lineup, but a similar lineup to the Tigers. He went five innings, four hits, no earned runs, three strikeouts in that one. That was good enough for a 10-1 to Red Sox win. And I think the Red Sox offense is going to back up Winkowski here, even if the Tigers get on the board early. Alex Fado was really struggling last time out against the White Sox. And the White Sox aren't really a lineup that hits right-handed pitching very well. So surprised to see him struggle as badly as he did. Three innings, nine hits, seven earned runs, two home runs in that game. And 
Now, not a lot of teams have been hotter against right-handed pitching than the Red Sox as of late. As in terms of Team OPS, the Red Sox are number five in baseball against righties and WRC Plus as well. The Red Sox are number five against righties in the last month. So I like Boston's offense to get it done here. We've seen them score plenty of runs in their most recent series at Fenway Park against the Cardinals. Now against an even more beneficial spot against the Tigers. I like Boston on the run line here. Next up, we see the New York Yankees taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. Garrett Cole and Shane McClanahan are your starters for this one. A fantastic pitching matchup that we have here. Shane McClanahan's got to be one of the favorites to win the American League Cy Young this season. Great ERA below two, striking out batters left and right. He did struggle a little bit against the Yankees last time out, but overall, great body of work for McClanahan. On the other side, Garrett Cole, he's got a 3.33 ERA. He's still got 91 Ks in 73 innings. He's pitched really well in spots. You've also seen him really struggle in spots like his start against the Twins where he gave up those five home runs. But against the Rays, his last two outings, he's gone 12 innings, seven hits, one earned run allowed, and 17 strikeouts. He has dominated this Tampa Bay Rays lineup. And the Rays overall against righties in the last month and overall this season have really struggled. In the last month, the Rays are 28th in the league in Team OPS against right-handed pitching. They haven't had much power numbers either. And this total set really low at 6.5. I think it's for good reason. I like the under in this game. When it comes to the Yankees offense, they've been able to hit really anything righties or lefties, but they do struggle a little bit more against left-handers, and I do think McClanahan has a much better start than what we saw at Yankee Stadium, where he gave up those two home runs, but only one earned run in the end, as a couple errors costed McClanahan a couple outs in that game, and therefore it led to the home run. So seven strikeouts and six innings from McClanahan is really solid. The Yankees do strike out quite a bit against lefties this season. I'm going to take the under in the Yankees' race. Next up, we see the San Francisco Giants taking on the Atlanta Braves. Logan Webb and Max Fried are your starters in this one. Now, this line's a little bit strange as it opened up at Atlanta minus 155. It's gone down to now minus 140 for the Braves. A little interesting there, but I still think the Braves are the better team. You know, both teams had a, are in a travel spot on Sunday at night as San Francisco's going from Pittsburgh to Atlanta and the Braves going from Chicago to Atlanta. So, really don't think either team has an advantage there. The Braves are home, though, so you could give them a slight edge there. But Max Fried, 2.9 ERA. Logan Webb, 3.43 ERA. Both pitchers doing well this season. I do think Max Fried is a little bit sharper as well. When you look at Logan Webb, not striking out a ton of batters, giving up a good amount of base hits. Last time out, also walked a few guys in that Royals start. He did have nine Ks in seven innings, but allowed eight base runners against a pretty weak Royals lineup. And the Braves, despite I've mentioned that they're really strong against left-handed pitching this season, but against righties, they've been very, very good in the last month or so. It's been the, one of the bigger reasons why they went on that big winning streak. But Atlanta's sixth in the league in Team OPS in the last 30 days against righties. And in terms of isolated power, even better, second in the league in isolated power against righties in that stretch. So I think they can find a few runs on Webb, and I don't really like the way the Giants lineup has looked lately, especially on Sunday. I thought they had a, a great opportunity to grab a win, and they lost that game 4-3 to three to Pittsburgh. I'm going to take the Atlanta Braves here at a pretty good price on the money line. Next up, we see the St. Louis Cardinals taking on the Milwaukee Brewers. We're going to see Miles Mikolas and Corbin Burns on the mound for this one. I think we have another incredible pitching matchup on our hands. Miles Mikolas was not a guy that I was looking to back too often going into the season, but he's proved me wrong as he's having a great campaign. 2.62 ERA. Had a little bit of struggles in the middle and at the end of May and the beginning of June including a start against these Brewers, but he sharpened up quite a bit in his last two outings, going 16 and two-thirds innings, two earned runs allowed with 15 strikeouts in that stretch. So we're starting to see the strikeouts rise and rise a little bit more for Mikolas, which is important. He's more of a pitch-to-contact guy, gets a lot of ground balls, but if he can add those strikeouts in his repertoire, only going to have more success on the mound. We saw him flirting with a no-hitter last time against the Pittsburgh Pirates, and overall, I think the Cardinals are the better team in this spot. I know Corbin Burns is going to be right up there in the NL Cy Young voting, but the Cardinals have done a lot, a lot better right now, especially in the last 30 days against righties and offensively than they did in the beginning of the season. You look, they're number seven in baseball in Team OPS against righties in the last 30 days. The power numbers haven't been quite as good, but still, this St. Louis team has got a solid lineup. We know two of the best hitters in baseball and Goldschmidt and Arenado. I think it's going to be a close game, a pretty low-scoring game, and I think getting the plus money value we're getting with St. Louis is just too good to pass up. So I'm going to take a shot with the underdog here. They've been cashing quite a bit lately. Give me the St. Louis Cardinals on the money line. Next up, we see the Toronto Blue Jays taking on the Chicago White Sox. Jose Barrios and Lance Lynn are your starters here. Now, Lance Lynn had a really disappointing season debut against the Detroit Tigers of all teams. 
I mentioned the Tigers are one of the worst teams in baseball offensively, especially against right-handed pitching. And Lance Lynn gave up 10 base hits, three earned runs, and only four and a third innings in that start against Detroit. I do think he will sharpen up as the season carries on. He's going to have to be if the White Sox want a chance at making the postseason. But this is not really a good spot for Lance Lynn, especially off that struggling start. Going up against a Blue Jays lineup that scored seven unanswered runs against the Yankees, 10 total runs in that game, and won that ball game, and a, a huge win for Toronto. And Jose Barrios, whether he has struggled or not, he has been a winner for the Blue Jays. He's only lost, or the Blue Jays have only lost three of the starts that Barrios has had this season. They won all the games he pitched in in April. They went two and three in May, but so far in June, three and zero oh against the Twins, Tigers, and Orioles. 12 to 3, 10 to 1, 7 to 6, and he's pitching a lot better recently. He's been able to go deeper into ball games as well. Seven innings, eight innings, seven innings. Strikeouts are showing up there. 13 Ks, 5 Ks, 8 Ks, and we're also seeing the Chicago White Sox actually play a lot better on the road than at home. They went on a kind of a big road winning streak at home. They're four games under 500. Blue Jays three games over 500 on the road. I'm going to take the Blue Jays here on the money line. We're getting a really good price with Toronto. I'll take Toronto on the money. Next up, we see the Kansas City Royals taking on the Los Angeles Angels. Chris Bubich and Noah Syndergaard are your starters for this one. Now, Chris Bubich, I got to give him credit. He is improving his game quite a bit from the beginning of the season. His last three starts, he hasn't given up a home run. He's striking out more batters. He's limiting more walks in his last couple starts. Now, although he wasn't good enough to get the win in his last outing against the Giants, this, the Royals were very competitive in that game. They only lost the run line in the bottom of the eighth inning where uh, the, the Giants scored a run, but uh, the last four games, Bubich has either won, they've, we've seen the, they beat the Rangers, the Astros, the Orioles, or like I mentioned, that close loss to San Francisco, and he's facing an Angels lineup that's now 29th in the league in the last 30 days against left-handed pitching. Robbie Ray pitched really well against uh, Los Angeles in his last start against them, and I think the, the uh, Royals can keep this game close. You look at Kansas City offensively against right-handed pitching as of late. They're in the top 15 in baseball in the last 30 days against righties in Team OPS, and Noah Syndergaard, the lack of strikeouts really concerns me. Only 35 Ks in 51 innings, just not the Syndergaard that we're used to seeing. Maybe that's because of his injury status and uh, the surgeries he's had in the last couple seasons, but he's just not as effective as he once was with the Mets, and I think the Royals can find a few runs early. The Angels had to use a ton of relievers this weekend, especially on Sunday, where they used Loop, Iglesias, Tapera. I think that's going to hurt them late in the game in this one. I like the Royals to keep this game close and maybe even win it outright. Give me Kansas City on the run line, getting the one and a half runs. Next up, we see the Arizona Diamondbacks taking on the San Diego Padres. Zach Davies and Yu Darvish are your starters here. Now, this is an interesting game. I mentioned that in the weekend, a lot of the underdogs were barking and biting, and it's important to pick your spots with these dogs. You don't want to just blindly take them and just take all the plus money, as tempting as it may be. But I do think this is a good spot to take a shot with the dog, like we've seen in a couple games this on Monday. I like Arizona plus one and a half here. I think they have a shot to win it outright as well. We look at the Padres coming off their series against Coors Field, so they're not going to have any days off before going from Colorado, an extremely different altitude, to San Diego. So I do think that's going to affect this lineup. We've seen the last few teams that have gone from Coors Field right to a different stadium you know, with no day's rest. They have struggled offensively, and San Diego is especially going to struggle offensively because not only are they facing a right-handed pitcher, which they've struggled against righties all season long, but they're going to be without Manny Machado for this game. He's going to be out for quite some time as he sprained his left ankle on Sunday. That's a big loss to this lineup, a lineup that's pretty weak without him. I mean, he's one of the best hitters in baseball right now, and San Diego has certainly improved their game against right-handed pitching offensively, but a lot of those numbers were weighted unjustly because of that series against the Cubs where the Padres were scoring runs left and right because the wind was blowing out, it seemed like 60 miles per hour in center field and in Wrigley Field. So I'm not sure that's a true test of this team. We saw them struggle at Coors Field in a hitter-friendly ballpark. And I think they struggle here against Zach Davies, a guy who's just coming off a seven-inning shutout performance with seven Ks against the Reds. He's limiting more home runs. He's limiting home runs, limiting walks, earning more strikeouts. He's limiting hard contact in general. The Padres struggled, struggled against righties. The Diamondbacks are a very powerful team against righties. I'm going to take a shot here with Arizona getting the one and a half runs. And that's it. Those are the games for Monday, June 20th. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And don't forget to put your baseball picks in the comment section below. Again, if you're looking for my best bets, you can find those at Pick Dogs Premium. As always, this is Ron Romanelli. Good luck.